What's up guys, C Zero Media here. So I just went to Starbucks and got Frappuccino, but it wasn't really cold enough for me. So I got a bunch of dry ice to make it cool as I wanted. No, I'm just kidding guys. Today I'm gonna be removing the sound deadening in the FD. So by sound deadening, I'm talking about this crap here, this here, this here, all that stuff up here. Uh, the reasons why people remove sound deadening for one, because it's uh, additional weight you can save out of your car and for two, it's kind of dirty. I plan on painting the uh, inside of the car a little bit and maybe even do some more management. So sound lightning is one of those things I don't want in my car and today I'm going to be removing it using dry ice. There's a bunch of ways you can remove sound lightning. I know a bunch of people have used air hammer and remove it that way but what I'm going to do is I got here a bunch of dry ice packs. Those of you who don't know where to get dry ice packs, I got mine from Meyer, which is a common grocery store here in Michigan. It was right next to the ice packs in the front of the checkout area. So, if you're looking for dry ice, I recommend calling your local grocery stores and uh, see if they have any before you even go there. So, some things I like to use when I do this is rubbing alcohol. When you mix dry ice with rubbing alcohol, it tends to break down faster and you can get the most out of it. What I like to do is crush up the dry ice. So that's why I have here a bunch of uh, home uh, renovation tools. For those of you who are curious, I grabbed about 20 pounds of dry ice. All right guys, so here's what it looks like. Initially, I just kind of opened up the bag and put the dry ice in here and started crushing it like so but like you can see it's hard to crush these things up so I'm just gonna go ahead and put my alcohol in here and see what happens hope it starts breaking down now I don't even know how much to put in here so I'm just gonna go in by the feel of the dry ice it's getting nice and smoky okay here we go So after you think your dry ass has kind of settled in there, you just want to grab a screwdriver, go in the middle there or chisel, and uh, hit it with hammer and the uh, sound landing should technically come out. Alright, so I've been kind of going at it for 20 minutes or so and it's pretty tedious. You can see that some panels come out like that which is awesome when it does that but most of the time you kind of have to just pick at it and um, hammer your way through. All right guys, so here's a little progress update. I've been just kind of going at it. Kind of forgot about the camera. Hammering, picking on things, and the driver's side as you can see is going pretty well. But the passenger side and the tonal area is kind of pain. I'm having a hard time getting the dry ice up on the wall here where it's vertical. And right now I'm working on the trunk area and trunk area is actually kind of easy so that's why I wanted to show you as I walked on this. So as you can see, sometimes if you're lucky, you can just kind of pick out it with screwdriver like this. And it'll come out. It's quite satisfying when it comes out in big pieces like this. And this, guys, is what it looks like when I do the sides. Um, it's not as effective as when I lay it down on the floor, obviously, but it seems to be working. So let me know if you guys know any better ways of getting the side sound deadening off for my viewers in the future. But this... What's going on, guys? So this is actually day two of sound deadening removal on the FD. Um, so as you can see, I have removed just partially the back part there, the center section, the floor pan, the rear spare trunk area, uh, spare tire area actually came out pretty good. All this was covered with sound deadening. I removed that. This here where the AccuSamp sits um, have come out as well. And there's still this portion here on the side as well as on the other side. Uh, that rubber carpet piece here. This on the left and on the right has to come out 
and as well as all this vertical surface on the transmission tunnel has come out and uh, my friends told me that I wasn't crushing up the dry ice enough so what I said was basically instead of manually doing this with my hand and hammer and chisel because that was kind of getting ridiculous ridiculously tedious and it was hurting my hand after a while so I just said fuck it I'm just gonna get a uh, air compressor so I went to Home Depot picked this up <coughs> and now it's hooked up to a air hammer with chisel on top so I'm just gonna use this first to crush up the dry ice nice and fine and it's gonna get super loud so I'm not gonna film this uh, but after I crush this up I'm gonna show you what the consistency of dry ice looks like and hopefully I have a better luck removing this today than I did yesterday all right so I use air hammer to crush up the dry ice and it looks so much better than it did yesterday it looks like snow this is the consistency you want and I'm gonna pour alcohol in there gonna activate the process and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in the car and see if it works any better than it did yesterday it should hopefully if not I'm just gonna go into it with my air hammer I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's making this cracking noise and that's exactly the type of sound you're looking for. Alright guys, so I basically finished up sound deadening removal process for day two. Air hammer has worked so much better than dry ice. I wouldn't say that dry ice wasn't helpful, but for my particular car and the Mazda RX-7 1993, I found that dry ice without the use of air hammer was just too uh, labor intensive. Oh, and I almost forgot. This is the sound deadening stuff that came out of my car. I'm gonna weigh it and see how many pounds this weighs, but as you can see, some of it came out beautifully, like this piece here. And some of them are small pieces like this, which is why I needed a air hammer to kind of clear everything out. But this trash can is actually quite heavy. It's gotta weigh at least five pounds, maybe more than 10 pounds maybe. If you have air hammer, I highly, highly recommend that you use it. Even if you don't have one, I would still recommend you buying an air hammer because it just makes the job so much easier. The orange line I bought from Hover Freight and the air hammer I also bought from Hover Freight. This was like 10 bucks, the cable was like, uh, I don't know, like five bucks. Really good stuff, but I heard bad things about Hover Freight air compressor, so I would stay away from that just from uh, what my friends have told me and what the internet has told me and that's why I went to Home Depot and got the Husky air compressor instead uh, this ran me about 220 I was considering getting the 3, uh, 33 gallon version but I figured 20 gallon should be okay because I have all these electric power tools for now and the only thing I'm gonna be using air compressor for is things like uh, air hammer, nail guns and painting which is another reason why I bought the air compressor because I'm gonna be painting the inside of the car and under the hood after all this is cleaned out so what I'm gonna do next is basically just go in here and clean up all these little pieces left behind I'm still not finalized on what kind of paint I'm gonna be using to paint the inside of the car but cleaning up the inside of the vehicle is my next step so thanks again for tuning in guys air hammer is the way to go at least for me with sound deadening removal thanks again for watching my video let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you in my next one